Ah, yes, it is I, Gurk. Player of video games. Recently, I was feeling nostalgic for the Mario and Luigi RPGs, which is why I decided to sit down and play the only one in the entire series that I have never played. Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga was the first of the Mario and Luigi RPGs, released for the Game Boy Advance in November of 2003, and it is literally the only one that I haven't touched. I played Partners in Time, Bowser's Inside Story, Dream Team, and I played Paper Jam until I hated it. So why not play the game that came out a good 18 years ago, and congrats Superstar Saga, you're an adult now, time to start paying rent. Superstar Saga starts kinda different from most other Mario games. Instead of Bowser just kidnapping Peach, this game sees Cacletta from the Bean Bean Kingdom stealing the princess's voice and replacing it with some sort of destructive text. I mean, it wasn't actually Peach, it was some birdo, but we, we didn't know that yet, and neither did the Mario Brothers, but whatever, that's not the point. The point is that this is different, and it's fun. Bowser, realizing that kidnapping the princess while she's having this whole explodey talk issue, made a decision. Okay, so I don't really want to kidnap Peach if she's gonna, you know, destroy my entire kingdom by just talking. You want to call it even now and just try and get her voice back? And Mario responds with a hearty, Yahoo! So is that a yeah? Mario and Bowser set off to the Bean Bean Kingdom and Luigi gets dragged into it too because this isn't called Mario Superstar Saga, is it? You get attacked on your way there, you crash, Bowser gets shot out of a cannon, and then the game really begins. You explore the Bean Bean Kingdom looking for ways to stop Cackletter and her evil plan to take over the Bean Bean Kingdom. I'm gonna say Bean Bean Kingdom way too many times in this video, I swear to god. Superstar Saga just oozes charm. A lot of Mario games writing is pretty... bland? I don't know, I'm not sure if that's the right word to describe it. I guess Mario games tend to not really care about having fun writing because they just don't really need it. A traditional Mario game focuses on solid platforming and not much else, which leads to some really incredible experiences, but Superstar Saga isn't a platformer, it's an RPG, although it does still contain some elements of a platformer. And RPGs are known for their fun characters and memorable writing, which Superstar Saga definitely delivers on. Mario and Luigi themselves are injected with more life than ever. They have animations that show them being silly, screwing around with one another, and generally just being a lot more lively than they are in the mainline games. Bowser is still a villain here, and he makes jabs and antagonizes the brothers, but he's a lot more enjoyable in Superstar Saga than he is in other games. After he's shot out of a cannon, the King of Koopas starts working as a henchman for some random thief, and eventually ends up getting possessed by Cacletta. And speaking of, the original characters from Superstar Saga are just filled with personality. Cacletta, and eventually Bowletta after the aforementioned possessing of Bowser, is some sort of crazy empress hell-bent on ruling the Bean Bean Kingdom, and her loyal servant Fawful is even weirder. Fawful was so popular that he ended up coming back in later Mario & Luigi games and even ended up being the main antagonist in Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. Queen Bean is the queen of the Bean Bean Kingdom and she's just ridiculous. She has to shout everything she says and the ground shakes whenever she just decides to jump. Her son, Prince Peasley, is a good guy who definitely has a bit of an ego. As you might notice, he feels the need to flip his hair back with nearly every sentence. I I'm not kidding, he does this so fucking much. Characters in Mario games are usually completely flat, and yeah, these aren't going to give anyone a run for their money, but seeing fun dialogue with actual personality coming from the characters is a definite nice change of pace. But I hear your complaints. Gurg, who gives a shit about good characters and fun writing? I just want to play the game! Well, you're wrong. Yeah, I disagree with you and think that writing is a very important part of making a good game, but disregarding your stupid opinion, Superstar Saga's gameplay is pretty damn solid. You know how RPGs work, I already talked about it in an older video. To summarize, and then them waiting for you to attack, then you waiting for them to attack, and then waiting for you to- So how does this game innovate on the fossil of a formula that is turn-based combat? A lot of what makes it unique comes from its action commands. Action commands are how you attack and dodge enemies' attacks as Mario and Luigi. Think of them as quick time events, but a lot less stupid. You have to time your button presses using A for Mario and B for Luigi with the brothers' actions in order to have the attacks do the maximum amount of damage. It's a pretty small change, but the smallest changes tend to end up making the biggest differences in game design. This little detail makes combat a lot more engaging. It makes it feel like you aren't just pressing a button to select a random attack and then watching your character perform said attack, like most RPGs. Boss fights take the combat even further, making you do things like attack different parts of the enemy at different times and recognizing varying attack patterns. And there are plenty of fun minigames that are fun little breaks meant to keep you from getting too tired of the combat. Pair that with the puzzles thrown in here and there, and there's a good amount of variety in Superstar Saga that should keep you entertained the whole way through. The world of the first Mario and Luigi RPG isn't anything to scoff at either. Bean Bean Kingdom is a very lived in location. There are plenty of towns with unique inhabitants, from Little Fungi Town, a town full of toads who've decided that they're fed up with Peach's tyranny and immigrated to the Bean Bean Kingdom, to places like Bean Bean Castle Town or Hoo Hoo Village, which have their own game unique races that don't look anything like older Mario characters. 
All the NPCs in this town will give you fun little blurbs of text, and it's just nice to see this sort of thing in a Mario game. After playing all the other games in the Mario & Luigi RPG series, coming back to the original Game Boy Advance game has definitely been fun. It's neat to see all these tropes and mechanics I associate with Mario & Luigi as they were originally. And while there isn't really much of a reason to go back to this game if you played any of the later ones, unless you're weird and like me, I can definitely recommend playing it if you have a GBA and you want to get into the Mario & Luigi RPGs. Or, you know, you could just... you could just do this. Great game, 7.5 out of 10. Do the Mario swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step and then again. Let's do the Mario all together now.